social linguistically nigeria is a multilingual nation and that is why an average nigerian child find himself in a trilingual situation nigeria is the most multilingual nation in africa our multilingual setting are viewed from the following perspective that is nigerian multilingual structure or setting are viewed from the perspective of english language in nigeria that is the perspective from the fact that english language is the official language in nigeria despite the very numerous number of languages that we have the perspective of other foreign languages because according to the national policy i mean according to the language policy a nigerian child also has to learn french and also arabic french in the sense that uh there are countries surrounded by nigeria most countries surrounded by nigeria are french user they use french as a language french, french speaker so it is now done on us to see that um, if you want to have good rapport and good relationship with our neighbors we need to learn french and we need to encourage learning of french and we need to put it into the school curriculum the third one is the perspective of nigerian three major languages the perspective of learning the three major languages the awusa the yoruba and Igbo languages then the perspective of large but non minority language groups we have some large but they are non minority non majority language group and we have example of some courses that are being studied even in in school but they are not as popular as the three major nigerian languages so we have course like uh, ethic we have ibibio and some other ones being studied but they are not as popular and they are not as well developed as the three major nigerian languages then we have the last one the perspective of minority languages in nigeria those minority languages their own uh, the, the, the the perspective of Niger uh, minority languages in nigeria these are languages that they, they they are in existence they are part of the number of languages they are, we have but they don't have a highly developed orthography and majority of them are usually oral they are in their oral form so they are not in the written form so nigeria has many language many languages nigeria has many languages the country has about um, 521 languages being spoken within the nation 521 languages being spoken in nigeria mutually unintelligible is seen in most nigerian languages that is there are so many but only few of them are documented only few of them can be used especially the three and some selected few have language of um, have the orthography and only few of them can beat up the um, um, condition for being uh, a literacy language. So, mutually, most of them are unintelligible. And this is seen in most um, speakers of this language that they don't even understand one another. And the only few of them, only few of these languages are written. So, most Nigerian languages are oral they are spoken only and not written and they are not used beyond the primary level of the educational system because majority of them are in their oral form they are not written so they are not language of literacy they are not language of literacy they are not used in the teaching of reading and writing in native languages in nigeria most nigerians are not literate even in their mother tongue most nigerians are not literate in their mother tongue you see some of them when they speak in mother tongue they they, they, they speak it as if they are 
the uh, learners of the language. They speak it as if they are foreigners. So the implication of most Nigerians, most Nigerian languages being oral and not being documented is that um, most Nigerian languages have no local or official alphabet. You know, we said we have about 521 languages. Majority of these languages do not have official alphabet. But the three major Nigerian languages, they have a vast body of literature. They are well developed. They have their literacy. They are used. Um, they have the oracy. They have the literacy, and they are used to teach right from primary school level up to the university. Uncodified language or uncodified languages face the risk of going into extinction. When we say a language is going into extinction, it means that language is dying off. With time, such language will, uh, will not be in existence. And so this is not good for language development. So language that is not written, language that is not documented, face the risk of language that is not documented face the risk of going into extinction. Either because they are not being spoken by those to whom the language is a native speaker, or the native speaker find it more convenient to speak other languages. This is one of the reasons, or these are reasons why language go into extinction. When they are not being spoken by the owner of the language, and when the owner of the language, the speaker of the language, find it more convenient, more comfortable to speak other languages. So today it is known that many Nigerian languages face the risk of extinction, face the risk of death due to um, non-codification, due to, due to non-alphabet um, to... Um, to use for literacy purpose. Most Nigerian languages cannot be used for literacy purpose. Or written languages are generally not language of literacy. And so most languages in Nigeria are not language are not languages of um, literacy. By languages of literacy we mean language which are used to teach people how to read and write. It is known that literacy level of Nigeria is generally low, and mother tongue or mother tongue literacy is even more dreadful. So it is until when a language is used to read or write, that is what can save such a language from going into extinction. But the most uh, challenging one is that um, even mother tongue literacy is not being developed among us. So how do we now arrive? at a unified language that is food for thought. Mother tongue literacy is one of the many problems facing multilingual Nigeria. Also, most Nigerian languages are not written. This means that the alphabets of these languages have not been developed for literacy purpose. Whereas, the alphabet of the three major languages are well developed and they are language of literacy. That is, the alphabet of Hausa language, Yoruba language, and Igbo language are well developed and they can be categorized. These languages can be categorized as language of literacy. A written language is also a language that can be used to teach non literate people to read and write. It is only when a language is codified that it can be used for reading and writing. So such a language can also be used in a formal school system. It is when a language is codified that it can be used in a formal language system. That is when learning of such a language can actually take place. So the fact that most Nigerian languages are unwritten is an indication that these languages are not ready to meet the demand of mother tongue education. That is, teaching the acquisition of reading and writing skills 
in the mother tongue. Most Nigerian languages are not ready for this because they do not have a well-developed orthography that can make people study them in a formal school system. Let's now look at creating of multilingual Nigeria. The creating of multilingual Nigeria. The problem of multilingualism in Nigeria originated from our colonial master who brought together people of different languages and culture as one nation. They didn't study us. They didn't look at us. What they are interested in is putting us together under just one directorate for them, for them to, govern, to govern us and for them to rule over us. The British had very little idea about the linguistic diversity of different groups of people, different territories that they put together during amalgamation. This led to a, a linguistics and sociocultural conglomerate of several territories ranging from different geographical areas, from the desert in the north to the equatorial condition in the um, Sahara part of the nation and the equatorial condition in the south. So there is amalgamation of the north and the south together. This, the effect of this is that without a single language, it is impossible for British administration to really um, go in the way they wanted it. So the effect is that it's impossible for the British administration to have one local language to unite us together because we are from different um, geographical regions. And we have different um, um, languages. We are, they, we are, we are, the British administration united people from uh, springs of Sahara Desert in the north to the Equatorial Forest in the south. The effect of this is that it is impossible for the administration to have one local language to unite us together so they don't have an option than to adopt their own language which is english as the official language and medium of contact for everything they had to do since there is no central local language to be used so the colonial masters have no choice have no choice than to impose their own language on us the colonial masters resorted to using education as a medium to officially teach us and to actualize the use of English as the official language of administration. Ever since then, Nigerians of that time, them, then Nigeria of that time do not understand English, but they have to learn the language. And the British also do not speak Nigerian language. So it, it became mandatory for the people to learn English language. The colonialists were quick to see English as a bridge language across peoples and culture. English ever since have continued to play the role of a unified language in Nigeria. So today, English is the official language and there is no single indigenous language that is able to fit in into several uses of several ways in which English is used in Nigeria. So, thank you for listening. Nagode, Anya, Dalu, Ashe. Bye bye.